called a tuttle box. The foil will fit inside this base right here. This one has a fairly large box. It's got two holes on the top that show exactly where your bolts are going to go for holding in your foil. Now this demonstration is for if you want to put it in a surfboard you can cut this foil, this box down a little bit. This is really tall. This is about five inches tall and it's about four inches wide. The newer ones will be a little bit narrower. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in my daughter's surfboard and uh, I'm going to trim this box down a little bit. So I'm going to put some tape on the side here so I can have a little guideline. I'll sh put this one inch tape on both sides of this. We're going to put it in this chop saw and cut it. Okay, I'm going to take this uh, one inch tape, just put it down the sides of this thing, right down the sides of this, this opening here. This is going to give me a little bit of a guideline and a straight line to where I can cut this box down. Normally, if this was uh, for your stand up, I recommend keeping the full base here and don't cut it down. You get a little bit more load when you're putting it inside of a, a stand up because the stand up boards are much bigger. So you can see I've got two, uh, two inches on both sides. This is about three quarters of an inch here. So with this, my box is going to be about two and, and three quarters inch wide. I'm going to chop it right here and get rid of some of this flange. I recommend having the biggest flange that you can because it's just a little bit stronger when you're attaching it to the bottom of your board and your bottom cap. I just like the bigger flange the better. Okay, here's the 5.9 surfboard. We're going to put the Tuttle box in it. I've marked a center line, put a piece of tape on the board, put a center line on it, and I'm going to mark this Tuttle box opening to be right at 9 inches on this board. So I'm going to put a mark here, make sure that your, your square is off the tail here or however you're measuring it. I'm going to put it right at 9 inches. Okay, here's our Tuttle box. We've marked this at 9 inches. We put the end of the Tuttle box here so we know where that's going to be. Now we're going to put this up here and draw an outline so we can route this box out. Okay, I've got my box put right where my mark is down here and I'm going to draw an outline here. Make sure that your front center line looks good. Okay, I put a little bit of a outline here. Then I cut my tape away with a razor blade so I could see it a little bit better. Okay, I've dry fitted this Tuttle box. You see I've done the hole. I put the box in there. Now I put a windsurfing fin or you put a piece of wood that fits perfectly. Some way to know the side of this box here. Now I put a straight edge on this box and you check that this reveal here on your center line with that straight edge lying on there has about the same all the way up and down. If you have to, you sand the side of your box and move this one way or the other. This is what I mean by putting the square on there. This board is flat in the front. If, it, if you've got a bunch of V or you've got concave on here, try and get this uh, square to where it's going to be lining up straight. And then you check this to see whether your fin's got to go one way or the other. Make sure that this base is all the way up to the bottom of your board. Come down to this side and mark a line on here. Now you see how I've marked a line with the magic marker. Okay, so this is the line we've drawn. This is your flange side. This is the side that had the holes on it. We're going to cut these holes totally off because this box is going to be fairly narrow here. So we're going to go put it on the chop saw and cut it about a quarter inch on top of this so that it'll be easy for us to grind it later with our grinder. Okay, so here's our Tuttle box. You can see that the holes are in there. There's a built-in roof to this Tuttle box where these holes are recessed in here and you put your washers and your bolts in here. But since this is a surfboard, we're gonna cut it down to size. So I put it right in my chop saw here and I'm gonna cut it, leave about a quarter inch on the other side of this line so that it's 
uh, make sure that it's sticking out the deck of my board. I'm going to sand this later with my grinder. Okay, as you can see, we've just cut it with the chop saw. This is about two and maybe a, a three eighths inch tall now. We've cut off the holes that used to mount this with our, um, our regular box. Now, this is what a regular Tuttle box looks like without all the holes. This is a special one that we make with the holes already attached or inside of it, so you don't have to line it. So when we put this in the board, we'll have a template that's gonna fit in here and tell us exactly where to drill these holes. Okay, we've got our hole routed out here. We've got it all sized and fitted. Make sure that it would be, you know, it can go straight in our board. We tape the other side so that when we put in our epoxy with glass bubbles, we're not gonna make a giant mess on this side. We've got our tunnel box with a bunch of glass bubbles and slow epoxy put on it. Get it all kind of like, you know, cake frosting, put it all in there. We've got it all inside the inside of our tunnel box. We're going to sink this in there, get it to where it's flush this way. If you've got a lot of rocker, like say the tail of your board is a lot of rocker, it's going back this way with this thing naturally being there flush cockeye this thing a little bit down in the front so that the fuselage of your foil is more horizontal and parallel with the main surfing area of your board. Okay this is what I was trying to explain on the previous step is I put this Tuttle box down just a hair in the front compared to the back. See this is pretty much flush. This is down about a sixteenth of an inch. Now the reason I did that is because this has rocker right here and I'm trying to get this fuselage here. Let's try and get out of the light a little bit. The fuselage, this is where your wings are going. This is the front wing, this is your tail wing, but you want this fuselage, which is this piece, to be horizontal and parallel with the, the main surfing area of your board. So just imagine when you're riding it that this foil is going to go straight through the water. Whatever that fuselage is, is how that foil is going to react to be straight in the water. So if it's at a funny angle compared to where you're standing on your board, that's the way it's going to ride. So if this thing was tilted, for instance, really far back, let's try and move this. Like say it was, your box was more at that angle. This fuselage now looks like it's going to be running straight like this. Okay, through the water, see how that'll be straight. The board itself is going to be a little bit nose high in the air. So basically you're trying to get this fuselage running straight with about the straight distance of your board how you'd be standing. Aesthetically that's how you know it would look. So try and think of that if you have tons of tail rocker here and where you're putting your tuttle box that the front part of this tuttle box has to be down a little bit to get this angle of that fuselage straight. Now to hold this in here, I'm going to put some tape from one side to the other. And this is holding, you see, the bottom of my Tuttle box. I've got my box inside here. I recessed it about a sixteenth of an inch on the front. It's flat, dead flush in the back. This will let my fuselage ride a parallel with the uh, main surfing surface of my the deck of my surfboard. Now you can see I put a little bit of masking tape because I wanted to pull this fin over just a hair to the one side. So I put masking tape all the way around the board and holding it into place. I also put some of these tongue depressors on the side of the tunnel box to align this perfectly because it wasn't totally dead perfect uh, front to back. Okay, another thing I wanted to mention is that your Tuttle box should go all the way through the board like this. Basically, it makes like an I-beam and the 
the connection of the skins of your board on the top and the bottom hold it in place and that tunnel box can't move back and forth side to side do not try to route your board to the deck of the box or to the deck of the board without going through the deck okay so this is what it looks like when it's finished after you've uh, glued in your tunnel box Okay, you can see I've put this box in here. I've sanded it down. You've got to make sure that you sand the uh, the flange area, which is the carbon area of your box, very well. You want to make sure this is sanded. Of course, you always sand the area of your board, too, to make sure that your epoxy or whatever you're laying it up with will stick real well. So that's what that looks like there. I'm going to fill in. There's a little gap right here, so I'm going to fill this in with some glass bubbles. Put uh, three layers of cloth over this. And on the other side, we've sanded it flush too with my grinder. Basically, we're gonna put at least two areas around this outside here, but we're gonna point load a bunch of layers right here, an extra four or five layers here, because there's gonna be two bolt holes that are uh, holding our bolts and the washers, and we wanna make sure that area is really strong. Okay, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take I've got a couple layers of carbon fiber. Since this is a really light board that I'm making for my daughters, I'm just going to make a super Gucci one with the carbon fiber. But anyway, we got this, this layer that's going to go over the total box. We got another layer that's a little bit bigger. And I'm going to cover it all with this two ounce. I like covering stuff with two ounce because two ounce uh, minimizes pinholes. Okay, those uh, layers that I just showed you, we're going to put them around here. So the one, you want to make sure that they span this area. Okay, for this deck side of this board, this is a carbon EPS board. So you see I have an air vent in here. Got my leash plug. And I've got my tunnel box here. So we're going to put two layers around this area here. And an extra four or five layers right over here covering where our bolts are going to be. Okay, I have sanded this um, tunnel box down after we pulled our, our did our lamination. As remember, we got two layers of carbon covered by one two ounce and an extra three or four layers of carbon were put straight over where the opening is for my tuttle bolts for the tuttle. You gotta make sure this area is really strong. Okay, now what I've done on this side is I've done a hot coat. This is where my area was for my tuttle box and you could see I flooded this little area where the tuttle box is because it was recessed a little bit because we angled our tuttle box like a sixteenth of an inch down in the front. Okay, this board is now hot coated um, the deck side, so all we gotta do now is sand it, paint it, and then open up that tuttle box and show you how to put the holes in it. Okay, here's the board. We've uh, hot coated it, we sanded it, painted it white, and I've marked or drilled a little pilot hole here for where the total box is. Make sure that if you're not sure where it is after you've done it, like say this one's painted, if I didn't have a hole already, I would measure the center line here and the distance that I know that it is from the tail and make sure you drill it in the perfect spot. Do not drill outside of your total box hole. What you want is this flush mount uh, bit here. What happens is with this will cut where you see this uh, cutting key in this thing and you rest the top part of it, this straight part, against the inside of the box. This is, I can run this thing around there without gouging out my total box. Okay, now you see I've, I've cut it out. I estimated where the box hole was so I could rest my trim router here and not gouge out all of my paint. We're going to move this tape a little bit over to the side so we can see what our edge looks like. Now take your rat tail file and you're going to feel there's like a lip here. Like if you didn't do anything with this, you would grab this with the foil and it would tear this, this lamination off. So go ahead and this all around so it, the foil cannot grab it. You can see how I'm kind of angling it over just slightly too so you get rid of this lip. You can see how this lip is I'm kind of beveling it here. And use your finger. Feel it. If you feel that it's catching something there you've got to get rid of it. Okay. I feel that it's kind of beveled over and I don't feel it catching anything. Feel both sides. Now I switch from my rat tail file that I've got 60 grit put on a 
uh, a, a wood paint stirrer stick. I like to use this instead of my file. I put it inside there and angle it over just a little bit. This is a little bit beveled towards me to try and make sure I don't feel any lip here. If you feel anything, try and get rid of it. Sometimes you'll have paint drip or uh, resin drips on the inside too. You can normally knock those off. But if you can't, just go ahead and sand them off. Okay, here's that template that I was telling you about that you can get at gofoil.com. Check the Tuttle Thin Box info page. So anything that you, when you want to drill out your holes, see we're going to cut this out and it's going to fit straight into this hole. So cut on the outside of this, these, these uh, black lines here, the very outside. That's all you got to do is you cut this thing out and this is going to use for your guide. Now look at this. When you print it out on your printer, that these measurements here, this is four or say 105 millimeters if you have millimeters or 4.14 inches. You want to make sure that these two lines are, that is the distance that you have after you print it out. The main thing that you've got to be aware of when you put your total box uh, template in there is that this level of this part here and this part here has to be level in the bottom of your board right here. Don't have it cockeyed like this or like that. Make sure that it's flush down with it right there. See how that's been resting right on it. So I put it like this, put it in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sight straight down there and I'm going to mark it with an awl or a, you know you got a sharp nail or something and you mark exactly where it is inside that box. That's where you're going to drill your hole. Then Okay, now, say you're making a surfboard, and this is fairly thick right here. This thing is about six centimeters. Now, that's about two and three eighths inch thick. So say your surfboard's a little bit thinner than that, cut this template down, and I'll take my scissors and trim this a little bit. Especially on the back side, you end up being a little bit uh, less. So I'm gonna take like about a quarter inch off of this, and still you do the same, same way you're going to sight straight down those lines. Okay, I have, you can see where I've got my holes marked there. I'm going to carefully, make sure that you carefully mark these and then check and double check them a couple times to make sure you're doing it right. Now I'm going to hit it with a kind of a, this is a pilot drill. It's a little bit smaller than what I'm going to end up with, so I'm just going to drill it with this. Okay, now I'm going to double check this with my template to make sure those holes are lining up where I think they should be. We've drilled our pilot holes where we marked it with the template. We're going to make those holes a little bit bigger. If you see it's one way or other, like this one might be able to scooch that way just a hair, we'll kind of fudge it one way or the other. Okay, here's my pilot holes. After I uh, do my pilot holes for these two total box. I like to drill it from this side if I'm doing it without my jig. Normally I use my jig. But anyway, this is, I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna drill both of these with a 5 16th inch bit. Then the last thing you wanna to wanna to do is to fit your foil in the board and make sure it fits. You gotta watch that with a surfboard that the base does not hit the roof of your, um, your deck lamination. You can trim your base down a little bit so that it doesn't hit the roof. If it hits the roof, it might push the deck lamination off. Okay, now, before you put your base inside your total box, especially with surfboards, surfboards are generally fairly thin, and these bases, this base here is like two and a quarter. I've cut this one down so it would fit into this, this board easier. This one is usually six centimeters, which is about just under two and a half inches. So I cut it down to about 55 millimeters. So I'm gonna measure this board exactly where it is. And I'm at about maybe 57, 58. So I've got a little bit of play to where there'll be a little bit of gap. You don't want this to be into the top of your uh, deck lamination. If you notice it is, what you do is you cut the bottom of this base down a little bit, like I'd put this in my chop saw, and cut like a little bit to try and get 
to this top part to not hit the deck of that board. What happens is if it hits the deck, eventually you will force that, that up off of your board and you're going to cause a DLAM. So the main key thing is that you see these, where these circles are, this is called a barrel nut. These are the threaded, this is like a brass, let's see if you can see it, you can't really see it on this one, but anyway, this is a brass rod that's in there that is tapped this way. So you don't want to get closer than about a quarter inch away from this, this bolt. If, if your board is super thin and you have to cut it way down here, what you got to do is take this this uh, barrel nut out, you push it all the way out through, you hit it with a center punch, this will come out, then make a hole a little bit deeper, fill in this whole thing with resin again so it's strong, put your barrel nut a little bit lower. Okay, I've taken my mast here and make sure that you fit it into your board to make sure it's your fitting. If it's a little bit tight, go ahead and sand on the inside of your box like I showed you. Okay, these are the washers that I was telling you about. Make sure that your washer spans this area where your total box is. You definitely need that because if you put the just the bolt right here, this bolt can get pulled right through this lamination even by just pumping it. You don't even have to hit ground or hit bottom. So make sure that you always have washers like that on your surfboard. Okay, I flipped this board over you can see we got the foil in there. Now we're going to go ahead and check our tuttle bolts, our two holes that we've drilled real carefully to make sure it fits. Remember, like I said, you want to use the washer to span the area of the tuttle bolt. Okay, these things are going in real good. So we've aligned them in, a, in the, the proper position. If you notice that you're not totally lined up right, cockeye your mass and fuselage back and forth just a little bit and see if you can get them to thread properly. These ones seems to be dead on straight away. So basically this board is going to get a, a deck pad like most surfboards. It's going to have a kick pad here so that you can kind of locate where your foot is. Your foot is critical when you're doing uh, foiling. In relation to the mast. So basically this front total bolt is close to the leading edge of this mast. If you're a lighter person you would stand up this way. If you're a heavier person they end up standing closer to the back bolt. So when you put your pad on here most pads have the kick tail or the kick flip tail on the back of it. That's a nice place to kind of put as a where you think you should put your foot. Okay this is the finish of our our Tuttle Box ex uh, example, we've got a 5.9 surfboard here. We've shown you all the steps to put in the Tuttle Box. You see the Tuttle Box here on this side. This one is at 9 inches. This is the last thing you got to do is put in. I've already put in one of these bolts. And I'm going to put in the other one. On a surfboard, you have relatively short bolts. Like this looks like it's only about an inch and maybe a half at the most. Put your bolts in. Tighten them up. And what I do to make sure that you get your your tuttle or your foil super tight is like I was explaining before you put it right side up I'm gonna take my shoes off here stand on the bottom here like this and I've rocked this foil back and forth you can see how my hands are on here I would grab the other wing here and I'm gonna rock this really hard back and forth while I'm pushing it down into the tuttle then I would come back to the other side retighten it again that's how you make sure that you get your tuttle in, your foil in super deep into your tuttle. If you can shake it back and forth, tighten it, go ahead and shake it again, tighten it, keep tightening until and shaking the, the foil back and forth until you cannot tighten these bolts anymore.